Hey guys, Rich here. This is Brick Scene. Look, yesterday we got an email from the LEGO Certified Store down here in New Zealand basically saying as of 10 o'clock this morning we could come and get the cantina. So I went out and got it. So Mos Eisley Cantina, set number 75290, 3187 pieces, we get 21 minifigs, a couple of land speeders, a few buildings, and it's going to cost you 350 US dollars, 320 Great British Pounds, or down here in New Zealand it's going to cost you $600. Look, what I'm going to do is we're going to do a quick unboxing, and then we'll get into the review. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the box. We'll start with the top left there with that Mos Eisley Cantina logo. I like that little round logo above it as well there with the twin suns and the outline or the, the silhouette of the cantina itself. Uh, coming across, you've got, of course, the twin suns again there with that Master Builder Series logo. Coming down into the picture of the cantina itself, they've got it uh, all closed up on the front. I'm happy enough with that, but the box looks pretty cool. So down the bottom, we've got that 18 plus, which is a bit strange, given it's a master builder series. It's a play set, of course. A set number 75290, as we have mentioned, uh, 3,187 pieces as well. We've got that black greebling along the bottom uh, with the Disney logo on the other side. Looking at the top of the box, as per usual, we've got all the minifigs lined up with all the names, of course. Yeah, fairly standard, but we'll get into the minifigs much later on. So looking at the back of the box, they've got the cantina all opened up. There's also a diagram down there on the left that shows an overview of the the set and all the pieces uh, and a couple of the scenes lined up along the bottom there as well that's uh, a cool looking box i like it all right so we'll open it up and see what we've got inside bunch of bags and there's a box and that's it so we have a box bunch of bags there Tucked into the side at the moment. We'll open up the other box. There we go. Bunch of bags. So it looks like we have got. There's the manual there. The sticker sheet. Not as many stickers as I thought there was going to be, to be honest. Um, but yeah, fairly sizable manual, of course. Uh, we have a bag with some extra uh, base plates and some of those rubbery sort of bits. Uh, and of course our, um, our due back as well. Looks like we're doing it in 18 steps, so what I'll do is quickly build it, then we'll get into the review. Okay, so we'll start with the speeders. Uh, we've got a lot to go through, so I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Now this is the V35 Courier. That's a nice looking little speeder. I like how they've managed to get that nice low sleek look. A few stickers on this one, I must admit. You know, a lot of that sticker sheet, I was actually quite surprised as I was going through this. A lot of the stickers were getting used up fairly quickly. Uh, but look, as I say, nice looking little thing. A lot of nice little techniques there uh, in order to get that shape along the side there as well as around the front. You know, a lot of sideways building. So coming around to the back, you can see those three sections up the top there. You know, it's put together in quite an interesting way. Like I say, we've got a couple of stickers here. You can see that one. Uh, on the side uh, and then the control panel on the top and if I remove the canopy you can see the uh, the other one up the front there as well uh, also a couple of stickers there uh, right down the front um, on the sides now we're going to come back to the minifigs a little later on but as this is her check Kalfas uh, speeder I just thought I'd show you uh, what it looks like with him in there he has to lie fairly flat in all honesty to get the canopy piece on and there he is with the canopy piece on there as well. Like I was pointing to before, there's that spot up the top there as well to put a minifig. So all in all, a cool little speeder. I think it represents the V35 very well. It's, it's nicely built, a few stickers, but you know, it wasn't too difficult. It was it was easy to put together and the, uh, the end result was a nice looking little land speeder. Happy with this one. Very, very happy with this one. So the 9000Z001 land speeder, or Greedo's land speeder. Uh, look, we've had a version of this before uh, that came with the last version of that uh, playset Cantina. Look, it's alright. There's a lot of stickers on this on the side here and that band around there as well. Yeah, look, it's it's fairly fairly simple in design, but a nice little little speeder. The top hatch opens there and we get a printed uh, control panel in the centre there. Like I say, it's fairly similar in design to that last one that we had. It would have been nice to get something maybe a little bit different. So both these speeders don't have any uh, flick fire missiles, uh, stud shooters or spring loaded shooters, anything like that. They're just speeders, you know, don't have to have a shooter on absolutely everything. Uh, so these ones don't. The only thing I didn't like about this one was the way the canopy sat when it was uh, when it was all finished. That's it closed up there and it just sort of sits on a little bit of an angle. Nothing major of course, but look, it is what it is. It is what it is. So what we've got here is a one room house uh, and a small junk shop operated by Jawa. 
That's pretty cool little builds, you know, from the outside. It definitely looks like a Jawa's uh, set up with all that junk hanging around. Uh, I'm liking this uh, canopy piece there. That's that's a uh, material or cloth piece. Uh, the dome there as well. Look, uh, what I'm liking about this, and you'll see as we get onto the cantina as well, everything is really, really well finished. You know, there's there's uh, the right amount of mix between studs and tiled finishes, I think. I'm, I'm liking that they are going for more of that with these adult sets. Uh, that sort of, you know, smoother finish. Um, I guess it's more more of an adult thing rather than having all those studs showing but you know for me it for me it's a big plus so these buildings just come apart there you can see the, the little claw pieces with the uh, hook pieces on the other side they just clip together uh, nice and easy but they come apart now we'll start with a one room house as you can see those uh, roof pieces just lift straight off so you can access inside the house itself it's open at the back so it's nice nice and easy to access anyway but uh, you know additionally you can take the roof pieces off which always helps so if we take a look in the larger side of this building you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff in there a little pot uh, a shovel cup some binoculars of course the you know the sack on the ground ah oh, some pretty cool little details in there on the other side you've just got a couple of barrels a square one a round one with a, a crowbar and one another sack there with a kyber crystal no, nice touch nice touch coming around the front you can just see a bit of junk there I don't know what it's meant to be but uh, it's clearly just some junk sitting in a box out the front and inside this little box here you've just got some sort of little wheel hub yeah that's cool so coming across the front there you can see there's a sticker on that brick there look I think that's the only sticker on this uh, building to be honest all in all nice looking little building I'm certainly happy with this one so now onto the Jawa's shop uh, look a simple little build as well uh, but highly detailed very highly detailed as I was saying before I like this cloth uh, canopy piece and I'm liking the use of that dome uh, you see a lot of domes in, uh, in the scenery in Tatooine of course so they've used them uh, quite a bit in the set we'll come around the outside of this one first uh, and you can see there a couple of the Jawa's wares that he has for sale uh, that little box down there is quite interesting it's got the Empire logo on one side and obviously some writing on the on the side there but i don't think we've seen that before uh, i'm trying to think if we've seen that in any sets before and I, I can't recall it so it looks like that may be a new uh a new print on a on a piece that we've already seen of course uh, coming around to the back we've got a door uh, this is quite cool uh, all you have to do is lift this up and they do actually have a uh, a piece there on its side uh, that holds it in place it's pretty cool um so you can leave them open uh, and then you just push it down and it closes straight away it does actually mention in the book that, uh, well, it, it, it acknowledges in the book that uh, the doors are meant to open sideways, but in order for play, they've made them go up and down, which, you know, fair call. I probably wouldn't have noticed, hadn't they mentioned it, to be fair. So coming out to the side, a couple of little windows, nothing major. But as you can see, it opens up and we get access to the inside and there's a few little details in there so we'll go through those the dome obviously lifts up on this side so that you can get a little bit uh, more light into the side of the shop uh, it doesn't make it any easier to get your hands in there but you know it opens anyway might not be the easiest to see in there but uh, a couple of little details you've got another square barrel with a spanner in there a little seat and a pair of binoculars or whatever you want to call it up the top there and a cup and if we come over to the other side you've got a broom and a blaster hanging up there on the top right hand side like i said before a nice little building and adds value to the set and when they're pushed together like that i think they actually look really really cool together you know that's a, a nice little addition to it i'm happy with those happy with those okay so let's get on to the main event the cantina itself look it's a it's an enclosed building uh, it has Look, roof pieces uh, and, and a sort of a, a structure across the center which we'll come back to but what I'm going to do is we're going to go around the outside uh, I'll take this dewback off because we will come back and have a look at the dewback as well on its own but starting off with the dewback's uh, pit area so fairly uh, detailed little area you know you've got like a little water hole and a bone there for the uh, dewback to feed on or maybe the bones of something it has been feeding on but look you, as you can see there's a you know they've got sort of tiles and and plates there that sort of just give it a a nice little bit of texture uh, I'm liking this ring at the front as well so I can only assume it's uh, somewhere to tether your, your beast so we come around to the left hand side of that uh, pit area for the dewback you've got your first of your moisture evaporators uh, there's two on the, on the set uh, look they're, they're both great builds this is the smaller of the two now we're around the back of the cantina there do you know what I like I like the, the way they've used those single round studs and they're just to sort of show a bit of texture in those walls you know they 
whether they're just scrapes or little divots in there. Uh, I, think, I think they look quite good. Now this is the back entrance to the cantina. Uh, they note in the uh, instruction book, you know, they give you a bit of, bit of information like I was saying, and this was quite interesting. You don't actually see the rear of the cantina anywhere in the Star Wars universe, in the movies, or, or anywhere else for that matter. But they, uh, the Lego designers got access to some of the concept art, so they were able to design uh, the rear area, which we will go into when we look inside. It's quite interesting. But looking along the back here, you can just see there's just more junk. So here is the second of the moisture vaporators as well. I really like this one. It's, it's, it's big and it's, it's just well designed. I really like the way it's been done. Uh, but yeah, no, very, very clever, very clever. Quite sturdy as well, despite it looking, you know, sort of fairly flimsy, but very sturdy in design. In fact, this whole set is sturdy in design. We'll come back to that too. Um, just going down to the side there, you see just some junk details, but the level of detail they've put into even the junk parts in this set, I really, really like. So coming around now to the front of the cantina, they've got more of those rings uh, on the front. Uh, a nice sort of open area, uh, if you like, an entranceway. I'm liking the detailing that they use here. Uh, oh, that sort of looks like a bit of a shutter uh, behind that wall there. Uh, but also you've got that door, and this is another one of those doors that you can pull up. It just pushes into a stud there on the underside so that it stays up. It's, it's quite, quite clever actually, quite clever. So before we dive inside, I thought I'd just take a look at the, the roof. Um, while it's not an enclosed roof, these pieces around the outside are all enclosed and those, those panels do actually come off. We'll come to those as we go around. Uh, but the center section here is quite interesting. It's sort of just the structure sort of piece and it sort of follows the, um, the bar underneath. Um, but what we do to open it up, you just basically pull it apart and you've got the, uh, the Technic piece there. Um, which clips into the grey piece on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start down on this side and we're going to move from left to right and we'll take a look at everything inside. So just coming back to this entrance way, you can see that dome lifts up again just so you can sort of get a bit of light uh, inside, but I'll turn it around we can have a look and see what it looks like on the inside. So you can see in the entrance way there you've got three seats curved round the outside, one on the angle there. Uh, then you've got the droid scanner on the left hand side. Those are two stickers, uh, one on that slope piece and one on the side of the brick. So as I was saying before, you can pull these roof panels off. Uh, that one comes off there, uh, that one there and that one like that and that allows a heck of a lot more light in there so that you can get right into those booths uh, and also so you can get your fingers in there too to uh, lift your minifigs out. We'll start with the corner booth. Uh, it looks like two sort of sofas in there. You've got room for well, a good four, maybe five minifigs to sit down. Another one of those Empire boxes down there on the left hand side with the white binoculars in it this time. Uh, in front of that you've got a table for two. Pretty simple but pretty cool. Note as well the lamps. The lamps right through this are just different. Each one is different which is really cool. It just sort of you know it gives it that sort of level of texture. I really like that they've gone to that level of detail. You know they've you know they made, made things a little bit different because this place wouldn't have been perfect. Uh, it wouldn't have had all matching furniture and uh, lighting I'm sure. So looking into the second booth here, fairly simple two armchairs and that uh, wheel piece, they're using a wheel piece for a, uh, a table on this one uh, and this booth here as well, they're both the same. But again, just looking at those light pieces, uh, different as you come through there. So let's have a look at this bar, really, really highly detailed, a lot of uh, gold and chrome silver pieces as well, printed piece down there for the, the till, but yeah, nice, nice details. I like this bar, really really well done, I like that big uh, piece around the front to sort of represent the railing. And there's the other side of the bar there, you've got a little door uh, down on the right hand side there that just, just opens up, let, let your barman in and out. So just before we go and have a look at the storeroom at the back, note this last booth here is for, uh, for the Bith musicians, uh, we'll get on to having a look at them of course with the minifigs. So there's that rear storeroom, it's pretty hard to get a good sort of pic picture in there with the, uh, the lack of light, but you can just sort of make out a couple of bottles uh, and a couple of little bits and pieces, broom, another pair of binoculars down there as well. So then we come to the booth where that famous scene took place uh, between Greedo and Han. It looks like a couple of normal armchairs in there, but these ones do have a play feature. Probably the only play feature on the set. Uh, I'm pretty sure the only play feature on the set. Uh, but there's a couple of little buttons around the back, uh, and basically you flick them and you can decide who shot first. Uh, fairly simple, but but pretty cool. Uh, and just next to that, actually, there is one more booth in the corner there. Um, with a couple of, well, one of those sort of armchairs and another single looking chair in there. 
So as you can see, with the cantina all opened up like this, it really is a sizable set and it, you know, it offers, you know, some great sort of play, you know, opened like that as well. You've got a lot of room there to set up your minifigs uh, and create a really cool uh, scene. As far as the bar goes and the, the booths, I don't think we could have asked for much more. I really think it's really, really, really well done. Look, so there it is with all the roof back on uh, and I've attached the outbuildings too, as well as put the speeders back in. I think it creates a real nice uh, depiction of a Tatooine scene. I think it's really, really well done. A lot going on there, a lot going on as far as the details and you know, just some, some clever little details as well to get those buildings looking aged uh, and making them look like they would, I guess. On a, on a desert planet. Okay, so let's get into the minifigs. First up, Luke Skywalker, everybody's favorite farm boy. Uh, we've had this Luke Skywalker before with the most recent sets that came out last year, the Land Speeder for one. And coming around to the back, you can see the printing on the rear. Uh, also, we get a second face on the head as well. Next up is Obi-Wan Kenobi. Again, we've had this one before, came with Obi-Wan Kenobi's hut. Uh, I think we got last year or the beginning of the year, whenever it was, exactly the same. I'm liking the hood, uh, the, the open hood, uh, but the same printing. And there's the printing on the back. You can see it's the same as well. He also comes with his usual blue lightsaber. Next up is C-3PO. Once again, we got the C-3PO with those sets. Um, I think it was Obi-Wan Kenobi's hut that we got C-3PO with. Uh, can't remember exactly, but this is one that we have been getting fairly regularly. There you go, just to show the printing on the back as well. I actually really like the printing on this one. I think it's a really nice C-3PO. Definitely probably one of the better ones that they've done. And there's your R2-D2. Look at that printing on the head though. That is almost straight. Hmm, this may be one to keep. And there's our Han Solo. Uh, look, nice printing on the torso as well as the legs. Uh, that belt printing as well. I don't know if that printing is different. It looks a bit brighter than, than some of the other ones that I've had, but uh, fairly standard looking Han Solo. Otherwise, he comes with that short pistol blaster. And there's the printing on the back and the alternative face. Uh, my printing on this one seems to be a little off to the side, but hey, that's okay. I'm happy enough with this Han Solo. Next up is Chewbacca with his stud shooter bowcaster. Uh, nothing new again here. Just that usual silver printing on the back as well as the usual printing on the front as well. So this is one of two sand troopers. This is our squad leader. He comes with a medium sized blaster, the white uh, binoculars, uh, the orange pauldron and a backpack. And there's the face underneath that so helmet. Just turn them around so you can see that backpack. Just basically greebling. It looks well, it looks okay. Uh, they've done this with a few of them recently, but there's no printing on the back of that head uh, neither. And here is the second of our sand troopers. Again, medium-sized blaster, uh, white binoculars, same backpack, uh, black pauldron this time. Has a slightly calmer-looking face. This one. And there's that backpack again as well. Just exactly the same as the other one. To be fair. So here is the first of three Bith musicians. They are exactly the same as the one that we got and I think it was the 2014 Cantina. Uh, so nothing has changed there at all except the instruments uh, and that is the only difference between the three of these ones is their instruments. So there's this first one here with a gold piece uh, there and the second one has an all black instrument and the third one there has an instrument with that chrome piece on there. No, no printing on the legs and just fairly simple printing on the back. So next up, Wuha, the owner of the bar. <laughs> Grumpy looking dude, tired looking dude. Uh, but look, fairly simple printing. I think this is again the same one as we got in the last cantina a couple of years back now. He comes with the pistol blaster. But if I turn him around there, you can see he has a rather angry face there for the second printing on that head. Now we're getting into some of the more interesting or some of the newer minifigs. And first up is Ponda Baba. Uh, this has been a long time coming. Probably will only come with this set, to be honest. I can't see this minifig coming with any other set at all. Uh, look, really cool head mold there. I'm liking the, the colors. I'm liking the size of it. That fairly simple looking uh, torso, the orange torso there, but uh, no printing on the legs, neither with this one. And there's the rear again, just simple printing on the torso, but a really cool minifig. I'm really happy to get this one in the set. Same with Dr. Everson. I really, really like this figure. He doesn't like you either, uh, but really cool printing on that head. They've made him look like this wily old crazy dude with that missing eye. Uh, nice printing going down into the torso there with the chest hair showing. Uh, it comes with a pistol blaster as well. And if we turn him around, he's got a rather stunned look on his face. Uh, and of course, just some simple printing on the rear of that torso as well. Next up, Labria. Uh, look, 
<laughs> it's fairly simple as far as the printing goes on that torso. It looks like some sort of necktie there with a black cape. No printing on the legs. Uh, we've got those orange hands as well. That face with that sort of weird smile. Um, and then that hair piece, that all new hair piece or head piece, whatever you want to call it with the ears and the horns on them. Now if I turn them around there, just a little bit more of a sedate face for the second printing there. And some simple printing there for the rear of the torso as well. Uh, no weapons with this one. Next up is Herchek Kalfas. We've got that same head mold as we do for Bosk, but yeah, look fairly simple printing again. Ah, nice enough minifig. No printing on the legs again. It would have been nice to see some more printing on the legs with these minifigs, but uh, all in all, I'm not too, too concerned about that. Uh, and look, again, fairly simple printing on the back. Nothing much going on there. Next up, Momo Nadon. I really like the printing on this one. You've got that sort of neck I don't know, some sort of scarf thing going on, then the printing that carries on right down through into the legs, and of course printing right onto the feet there as well. Uh, that head mold has been used before, but look, it's a really cool minifig, and I'm really glad that they've thrown this one in with the set too. So if we come around to the back there, you can see how that uh, head attaches, uh, and of course the printing on the rear of that torso as well. Then we have Greedo. This is the exact same Greedo that we got with the last Cantina. He comes with the short pistol blaster uh, printing on the uh, torso and on the legs with this one. But exactly the same head mold and there is the printing on the back as well. So next up is Cabe. Cabe is an odd looking little one. Uh, short legs, uh, white and orange torso there. Uh, there's some light printing of the, the details of the pockets and all that there on the torso as well. I'm not sure if the camera's picking that up. But into the head, again, some strange printing there with a, those uh, little teeth at the front and that snout and that head mold that I think we have seen before with the it might have been the DC minifig range pretty sure that's where we've seen that head mold before and there's the back there and you can see the details on that head mold as well as a couple of little details on the torso next up we have our Jawa only one Jawa with this set it would have been nice to probably get another one maybe given the size of the building that's dedicated to the Jawa but yeah nice printing we've had this one before so you know there's nothing new here I've uh, got the cross belt on the front and of course those bright yellow eyes on that head and there's the back there so yeah those belts carry on over to the back and the crossover as well no nice little jawa i like uh, i like what they've done with the jawas now last but certainly not least is garandon he's our spy all new mold there that's not actually a head mold it's one of those pieces that come from the neck uh, and goes up over a normal sort of headpiece. But we'll have a look at that in a second when I take the hood off. But look, stunning, stunning looking minifig to be honest. Uh, fairly simple printing on the torso uh, and no printing on the legs at all. But we've got a black cape there and the pistol blaster. So look, I just took the hood off there so you can see how that face piece works. If you like, it comes from the neck and just comes up over a normal headpiece. And with this set as well, we also get a Dewback. Uh, exactly the same mold as the last Dewback that we got in 2014. I know some people are disappointed that we didn't get a brick built Dewback. I actually prefer the molded ones myself. The only major difference with this one is of course the printing. Uh, we've got a slightly different sort of design. But other than that, it is exactly the same as the previous version that we got. Now the same as that last you back that we got, uh, you could also t uh, take the saddle off and put in a couple of brick pieces to make it look wild again as well. So yeah, a nice little touch. So look, all in all, when you open it up and have it all like this with all the minifigs displayed, it is an awesome looking thing. Look, a great display piece. I'm sure it's a great play, <laughs> play piece as well. Uh, but you're getting a lot and you realise when it's like this and it's all opened up uh, with all the minifigs sitting in there, just how big and how detailed it actually is. So in conclusion, enjoyable build. Took me a good five and a half, six hours. I like what we've ended up with. I like, you know, the main building. I like the outbuildings. I like uh, the speeders. I like the minifigs overall. 21 minifigs, you can't complain about that. But it would have been good to see some updates to some of our regular minifigs, like your Luke, your Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, maybe Chewbacca, uh, and of course Han Solo. It would have been good to see some updates to those. But I'm happy that we got these new minifigs in there as well. Is it, uh, you know, 350 US, 320 pounds six hundred dollars is it worth that much that is a lot of coin to be spending on um, a set but uh, i think it's probably worth it i think it is would i buy it again yeah of course i would star wars uh would i pay that money for it again probably um but like i say all in all i'm pretty happy with it um a couple of improvements would have made it even better but happy with that so look 
thank you very much for checking this out really appreciate it once again if you like this content please consider subscribing we do appreciate it it helps the channel grow uh, and we'll see you on the next one thank you